Good day, students. Uh, welcome to part two of the Algebra and Functions uh, KC review. We're going to be going over questions 81 through 19 in this series, okay? All right, let's go ahead and take a look at question number one, I mean 81. Uh, we are supposed to find which of these alternatives is equal to x to the third, y to the third. Uh, a good way to think about exponents is basically copies, okay? So if you have x raised to the third power, you basically have three uh, copies of 3 multiply with each other and y to the third is 3 copies of y being multiplied by each other, okay? So remember power is repeated multiplication and then coefficient is repeated addition. So since we have powers here, we're going to have 3 copies of 3 multiplied with each other, okay? So we have x times x times x, 3 copies of 3 multiplied by, so this is a product right here, y times y times y, 3 copies of y. So our answer is option letter D. Okay, let's take a look at question 82. It says x to the fifth, uh, what does x to the fifth equal when x equals negative 2? So uh, just remember your sign for multiplication. Anytime you're multiplying different signs, uh, you end up with a positive, with negative. If you're multiplying the same signs, you end up with, with a positive, okay? So there's an easy way to remember this. Um, it's called the using the peace sign. So let's, let's go over that mnemonic device. So basically, you have your you have your peace sign right here, and I'm going to make draw out the whole peace sign for you. Now, um, you just put two negatives on top and a positive on the bottom. Okay. So if you want to know what is minus times minus, the answer is plus. What is minus times plus, the answer is minus. What is minus times plus, the answer is minus. Okay. So when you're multiplying any two signs, you you look at what the other the sign the sign in the or the quadrant that you know multiplying it by it, okay? So if you minus times minus, these two, you look at what's in the other quadrant, it's going to be plus, so minus times plus is minus, minus times plus is minus, okay? Another way uh, to do it is minus times minus, since the signs are the same, you're always going to have a plus, okay? So you see here minus times minus equals a plus. Uh, and plus times plus, that's obvious, it's plus because the signs are the same. But if you have minus times a plus, signs are different, you have a minus, like here, minus times a plus, that goes the answer here, minus, and plus times a minus, plus times a minus, that goes the answer there, minus. Okay, so anytime the signs are different, you have a uh, minus, and then if the signs are the same, you always have a plus, okay? All right, so let's do that for this problem. We have x to the fifth uh, when x is equal to 2. So, so x to the fifth. Now, in x equals 2, I'm going to substitute uh, negative 2 with this x right here, okay? So we're going to have uh, negative 2 uh, raised to the fifth power, okay? So what on earth does this mean? Think about exponent as copies, okay? Product of copies. So we're going to have a product of five copies of negative 2. So it's going to be negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2, okay? So we have five twos. All right, so let's multiply them together. We're going to do two at a time. Negative 2 times negative 2, we do the sign first and then the number. What is negative times negative? Positive. Remember here, negative times negative is positive. Positive 2 times, and then we multiply these two. Negative times negative is, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I forgot to multiply 2. So 2 times 2 is 4. So this is 4 right here. And then negative times negative here is positive, and then 2 times 2 is 4. And then we just bring down this negative 2, okay? So anytime we have a positive sign, you don't need to put in any numbers. So we can write this as 4 times 4 times negative 2. Okay, let's do 2 at a time. 4 times 4 is 16. What is 16 times negative 2? Well, the signs are different. Remember, anytime the signs are different, you always end up with a minus. So we have minus 2 times 16 as 32. So your answer is negative 32. All right, so the answer is option A. Another way to think of this is anytime you have an odd power, the minus always comes out. And anytime you have an even power, the minus always disappears, okay? So this, you notice that this minus came out because we have an odd power. So like, if I wanted to use a shortcut, another way I can do this is I can say, oh, negative 2 to the fifth, since 5 is odd, this minus comes out. So we have minus 2 to the fifth. And then 2 to the 5th is simply 32, so you have negative 32. That's another way of doing it, okay? But if you don't remember this method, just uh, follow, do it step by step and work out the whole thing so you get the right answer. 
All right, let's take a look at 83. It says which of the following is equivalent to 6x minus 2 times 6x minus 2 times 6x plus 2. So basically, we're going to uh, remember I told you about copies. So if I have 6x minus 2, maybe multiply by another 6x minus 2, maybe multiply by 6x plus 2. Uh, we have two copies of 6x minus 2 here, so I can express them as 6x to the what? To the 2, right? Because I have two copies. I have only one copy of 6x plus 2, so I just leave it alone. And that goes uh, an equivalent form. So this matches uh, D. Alright? Remember, multiplication goes with exponents, alright? With powers. Okay, uh, let's move on to the next problem. Question 84. Um, we're going to use, we're going to simplify this. We want to find out what the square root of 4, x to the 4th is. Now, um, let me show you one rule of radicals that's helpful for problems like this. When you have the square root of a product, a times b, you can distribute this square root into both of them. So you can express it as root a times root b. Okay? So let's apply that idea to this problem. So this one can be expressed as the square root of 4 multiplied by the square root of x to the 4th. Okay? The square root of 4, what do you multiply by itself to get 4? It's 2. And then x to the 4th, if you think the square root of x to the 4th, all you're simply doing is dividing this power by 2. Right? If you think back to algebra, x, this can be written as um, x to the 4th raised to the 1 half. Right? So you're basically dividing the power by 2. So if you divide the power by 2 or you take 1 half of 4, you're going to have x to the 2nd half. Alright? So our answer is 2x squared. Option letter D is our answer here. Alright, let's move on to question uh, 85. Simplify the expression below. Now you have to remember the product property of exponents. If you have x to the a times x to the b, you add the exponents. Whenever you multiply, you add the exponents a plus b. Uh, and then when you subtract it, or when you divide it, you subtract exponents, okay? So in this case, it's a multiplication, so now we're just going to be adding exponents. So we have 6a to the 4th b c multiplied by 7a b to the 3rd c. Now, since we're adding exponents, some of these terms do not have exponents in them. So what's the default exponent? If a term doesn't have an exponent, the default exponent is going to be 1. So I'm going to give b a 1, c a 1, uh, and then this c a 1, and then this a a 1. All right, don't bother with the constants. We don't need to bother, uh, bother using this rule for them, okay? So we just multiply the constants as they are. 6 times 7 is 42 times, and then we're going to have a to the 4 plus 1, okay? So if, we, if you just look at this setup that we have right here, we already know what the answer is because we have 42 that eliminates a and b. And then we do 4 plus 1 is going to be 5. We know that this has to be the answer. But just for confirmation, let's set up the whole thing. So b to the 1 plus 3. And then c to the 1 plus 1. Okay? Simplify further, we have 42 a to the 5th, b to the 4th, uh, c squared. So you see our answer is consistent with this option, option b. All right. Uh, let's take a look at question 86. Uh, which expression is equivalent to 7a squared b times 7b c squared? So 7 a squared b times 7 b c squared. Well, it's the same um, process here. Um, so let's make sure all the variables have powers. Before we multiply b to the first power, b to the first power here. A already has a power, c already has a power. Okay, so let's go ahead and multiply. Remember, when you're multiplying exponents of the same base, you add the powers. So that's the product property of exponents, x to the a plus b. Okay, so let's do that here. 7 times 7 is 49. That eliminates option D and A. Now, A squared has nothing to be added with, so we'll leave it alone as A squared. B to the first times B to the first is B to the 1 plus 1. Okay, and then C squared stands alone. So if we simplify further, we have 49 A squared, B squared, C squared. Answer is option letter C. Okay. All right, let's move on to question 87. It says which expression is equal to the square root of 100 a square? 1 square root of 100 a square. I'm going to use that property of radical I showed you earlier, square root of a, b, 
is the same thing as the square root of a times the square root of b. All right. So finding that idea here, we're going to have this right. It says the square root of 100 to the square root of the constant and the square root of the variable. Okay. So the square root of 100, what do you multiply by itself to get to 110, right? And then a squared, remember, just simply means you're dividing the power by 2. So squared is the same as dividing the power by 2. So if I divide that power by 2, it's going to be a to the first power. And you can just write it as 10a. So you don't need a, an exponential value whenever it's been a variable is being raised to the first power. So the answer is going to be 10a. So 87 is option a. All right, let's take a look at uh, question 88. It says, which of the following is the graph of, one, of y equals 1 fourth x squared? Now, it's good to remember what your functions look like. If you have y equals x, it's going to be a line going up. It's a linear function. If you have y equals negative x, it's going to be a line going down with a negative slope. But if you increase the power by 1, y equals x squared, it's going to be a parabola opening up. If you have y equals negative x, x squared is going to be a downward opening parabola, a sad one. If you have y equals x to the third, it's going to be a cubic of this nature. It's kind of like a snake. And then if you have y equals negative x to the third, it's going to be the same thing but going down. Okay? So just remember these family of functions. These are a linear family. This is a quadratic family. This is a cubic family. Okay? So that's going to help us to really identify curves um, just by looking at them. We can tell what the equation is. So obviously we can see that in this case we have a quadratic family, okay? Because the power is two. So that means these two lines here are not applicable. These are linear, this is the wrong family. So the answer is either A or B. Now what we're gonna do is look at the mode of the parabola. Is it, a, is it positive or negative? So if you look at the value of A or the coefficient of the square is one fourth, right? So since one fourth is positive, our parabola is going to be opening up. You know how positive people are always happy, right? Most of the time. So it's opening up because the number in front of the square is positive. Okay? So that means this cannot be the answer. This is a sad parabola right here. So we need a happy one or a positive one. So this is the answer. The answer for 88 is option A. All right, let's take a look at uh, question uh, 89. This goes over the problem of functions I mentioned to you earlier. This is a linear function is of the nature of y equals x. This is an absolute value function, y equals the absolute value of x. This is a quadratic function, y equals x squared. And this is a cubic function, y equals x to the third. Please, please, please mem have a mental image of all these uh, graphs in your head before you start to take the KC because it will help you a lot, okay? So which of these match with this option? The correct answer is option letter C, okay? All right. Now let's take a look at, at uh, the last one, y equals negative x squared y equals negative x squared. Now, this is going to be a quadratic, but if you notice that it's negative, it's going to be a downward facing parabola, okay? So if you take a look at these two, what kind of family of functions are there? This is a, definitely of the nature y equals x to the third. You see that curvature right there? That's a cubic family. And this one is also a cubic, but it's descending, which is basically y equals negative x to the third. We're dealing with a quadratic family curve here, so that means these two are not applicable to this problem. All right? So now let's take a look at these two. They are definitely both quadratics are good candidates, but which of them is sad or opening down? How do I know it's sad? Because you have this negative here. A is basically negative 1. Since A is negative, that means it's going to open down. So which of them has a negative A? B has a negative A. So the answer to option number 9, B, is B. Okay? But there you have it. So thanks so much for taking the time to watch this video. Please feel free to subscribe to my channel just by clicking up here. Uh, more videos can be found on myto.serve.com. Thanks again and have a wonderful day.